Hiya. Hello. Welcome to GGKCS, the multi-generational podcast slash floss tube for fans of all things knitting, cross-stitch, and geeky. I'm Cece. I'm Dammy. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Thursday, the 27th of August, 2020, and this is episode 410, in which it's our eighth anniversary. Technically, it's not till Sunday, but this is the closest episode, so we're celebrating um, with giveaways, so stay tuned. Um, both knitting and cross stitch. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. To all returning viewers and a big hi to any new viewers, thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Anything we would like to address at the beginning of this episode? I'm still blocked on Instagram, uh, other than on my private account, Pink Pearl, and my public account. Oh, I had somebody ask, like, what do you mean? Because I see you posted a story. So, I can post a story on Instagram if I do it multiple times and I have it rejected over and over and then finally it goes through. But I can't post pictures, I can't like pictures, I can't comment on pictures, and I cannot follow anyone. So that is what I mean by being blocked. It's been 14 days now this second time, uh, as well as five days prior to this. So, fun times. Um... Yeah, we can talk about other stuff in Yummies, I think. So, um, well, we have a lot to cover this episode because we have a new owl to announce as well. So, we probably should get started. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. So, what's on your needles, Dammy? I think I said I would have these finished, but I don't, but I almost do. So I'm working on more baby chino socks. Um, baby chino socks are a pattern by me. They are now available on through our website. Okay. Yes. Um, it's a pattern by me. I'm using US fours, 3.5 millimeter needles, even though that's a size too big because I pulled the wrong ones out of the bag. And then I just said, I don't care. And the uh, yarn is Bernays Softy Baby in the Prince Pebbles colorway. So I'm almost to the heel for this one. And then I'll just do the leg and the cup and I'll be done. There you go. Um, yeah, I have moved more patterns over um, since we talked to you last. Um, I'm in the home stretch other than I think when I started there was like I think maybe eight patterns that I needed to reformat mm -hmm. as well as move over. And I think I've done three of them. I think I have five still to reformat. Um, I need to bring over all of the Tickled Pink book patterns, and then I think there's three or four other, no, like four or five maybe other new ones that happened after Tickled Pink that need to be brought over. Um, if you're new here, we're moving our patterns off of Ravelry. Um, they're, they're available through our website, javapearldesigns.com, uh, and there are links to get them there through Etsy or PayHip. So, um, that is keeping me busy. Um, okay, anything else you want to say? No. All right, let me show you what's on my needles. First up is this, is a pair of uh, tube socks for um, our friend Rebecca's daughter, Lou. It's from my French Vanilla Cappuccino sock pattern. Um, I'm doing 40 stitches. She just turned two. Mm -hmm. um, so 40 stitches, tube socks, um, so that she'll be able to wear them longer. Um, on US one and a half, two and a half mil needles, and the yarn I'm using is Pendia's Jewels Hand Dyed Yarn Super Sparkle in the Electric Pink colorway. So right now I'm going from the center, so that's going to be the darkest, into lighter, and then the other one I will go from light on the outside in. And uh, this Progress Keeper is from Tilting Planet. It's a globe of pink stars. Project Bag is uh, from Nerd Bird Bakery. And then the other thing I can't totally, sh I can't show you because it's a new design, but I'll show you the yarn. I'm working on my, I'll have two coffees and two cherry danishes to go please cowl on US 2's 2.75 mil needles. The yarn, as you can see, it's getting smaller every week. Uh, is Pandia's Jewels Floofy in the Miss Woodhouse Please Advise colorway. And the project bag is from Lizzie Bags. And then I'm also using another one of those 
globes, uh, globe progress keepers from Tilting Planet. Uh, it's just got multicolored stars in it. <clears throat> so, I just realized I didn't bring one of my FOs over here. Thank goodness we're going to stop for a second and we can get it. Uh, that's everything that is on our needles. So, let's move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about her finished project. Yes, so I have two this week. First up is my weekly preemie hat. This is number 34 for the year. Um, it's from my free top-down preemie hat pattern that you can get on our website. Uh, links are in the show notes. I did this on US6's 4 mil needles, and the yarn is Nitpicks Wool of the Andes Worsted in the Caution colorway and Lion Bread Heartland in the Glacier Bay colorway. It's more like turquoisey blue. It's It looks like green there. But um, So, number 34 for the year. And then the other thing that I had to have Dammy get for me was um, the surprise socks that I knit for our friend Rebecca. Um, the, it's a, for my French vanilla cappuccino pattern, um, US one and a half, two and a half mil needles, and the same yarn as I'm doing for Lou, Penny is Jules hand dyed yarn, super sparkle, and the electric pink colorway. Um, so um, I, I talked about before that what I did was, this was a sock blank that I wound so I could go from darkest to light and lightest to dark. So you can see it's really crinkly. And even when I'm knitting, you can kind of see on loose socks that there's, that it's really pretty bumpy, but it blocks out because it looks very smooth. Oh, it's just a piece uh, of um, fuzz. I was like, what is on the sock? So, um, yes, so went from darkest on one and lightest on the other. So, hopefully she'll be okay with mismatched socks, I guess. So, but, yeah. You re can't really see the sparkle. Well, you can a little bit. There's a little bit of silver sparkle in it. So, um, there we go. So, I finished those. And I will get Lou's finished so that I can um, mail those out to uh, to Rebecca and Lou for their enjoyment. And that is everything that I have finished uh, knitting-wise. I finished the cross stitch. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Floss Tube. You have anything? No. Okay. So, in my project bag from Tilting Planet, that's got the glittery in it, um, I am doing the Baba Black Sheep uh, by Prairie Schooler. Uh, it's, it was gifted to me from uh, Michelle Fidisici. And I am using 18 count Ada fabric that was dyed by Aaron to Martini Stitcher, and here is where I'm at. So I'm about halfway through the second bag of wool. Um, and I work on this during Stitch With Me's that release on Mondays. So there's that. Um, I wanted to show you a piece that I have shown you before. Um, I've already sent it out to my mom. That's why I don't have it here to show you. But I FFO'd my It's Spring Fever by Blackbird Designs. Um, Apparently, let's see, when did I finish this? I finished this back in March, in mm. the March, and had, it hadn't fully finished it. I knew I wanted to send mm -hmm. it to my mom at the same time that I sent um, the birthday slippers for my niece and nephews. Um, so I had thought I was going to make it into a pillow, and then I was like, I don't know how much, I don't know how much use she would get out of that. Um, so what I did instead was I used a piece of sticky board and covered it in fabric and then I mounted the cross stitch piece on sticky board and mounted that on top of the fabric. Um, and I didn't put a hanger or anything on the back because I don't know if she'll want to like maybe put it in a frame without the glass because uh, it's an 8 by 10 so it would be easy to get a frame for that or if she'll want to... Um, it would be really easy to attach a piece of twine or something to the back and hang it. So she's not received it yet. Uh, I think it'll get there early next week. Um, so, but I'm excited to surprise her with that just as a, just because. 
just because. Um, the other thing that I finished and I FFO'd this week because I wanted it to, I want, I wanted it to be able to be ready for display and everything is the, um, it was inspired, I showed you all I think last week, this was inspired by an embroidery uh, picture that I had seen online. Um, I can't remember where I saw it, if I saw it on social media or what, but um, my friend Julia um, charted it into a cross stitch pattern for me. So I cross stitched it and um, here is the FFO of it. One day I will be so loud about who I am that I will forget what being quiet out of fear felt like. Um, so what I this this board was from the Target dollar spot. It was three dollars, um, and behind this it says "Let's cuddle." I didn't buy it for that. I bought it because I thought it would be a good piece to finish something on. I didn't have anything in mind at the time, so what I did was I mounted the cross stitch piece on sticky board. This is an eighteen. No, 20 count Ada, gray Ada. Um, and so I mounted it on sticky board. Not, I don't know where my brain was, but it was a little bit too narrow and a little bit of the word was sticking out on each side. So what I did was um, I had this ribbon. And so I glued it to the back of the sticky board uh, because the other side of the ribbon has the same uh, edging. So I glued that all the way around, um, folding it carefully at the corners, and then I mounted all of that to the board and then added two sunflowers. And I'm super, super proud of it, and I love it. Hi, Pinky. <laughs> um, I, I, am, I love it. I love it. I'm really, really proud of it, and it will be going up by my desk after we finish the podcast. So... Uh, and thank you again to my friend Julia for, um, for charting that for me. Um, okay, next up, this got just a smidge of work this week, uh, because I was trying to finish that up. And then yesterday, I don't know, I, all of my energy just was kaput by end of the day. Um, I had spent a lot of time, um, working on patterns, um, and then we had to go to the store, um, to pick up some things and... I was just kaput by the end of the day, and so I didn't do much uh, crafting at day's end yesterday like I normally do, but I did a little bit on this. This is my To Better To Sleep Outlander bag from Stitch Toolbox, and I am using, in all of my projects, uh, a snippety from Caddy Cross Stitches uh, that's got felt for you to put the or fleece, I don't know what it is, for you to put your floss on, and then there's a magnet behind the label that holds needles and scissors. And what I am working on is a piece for Dammy's 21st birthday in October. Uh, this is Cats and Mandala's February by Kitty and Me Designs, Pamela Kellogg. And I'm using all of the called for colors. And this is on a uh, fabric from Be Stitch Me Artemis color. Uh, it's a 28 count Lugana. And there's where I'm at. So, um, yeah. I told Dammy maybe they'll get, because there's two other ones in the same pattern line that Dammy picked that they like. Um, I didn't mean do all three for one birthday. I just thought I would give you option. I know. So what I, but what I told you was maybe I'll do the second one for Christmas and the third one for something next year. You or said maybe, you would do it for my two subsequent birthdays. Or maybe, yeah, maybe it'll be subsequent birthdays. I don't know. I've got enough fabric to do all three. And you want them finished in a hoop, you said? Yeah. Can I put a pretty bow on them? Okay, we'll talk about it. <laughs> okay, so there is that. Um, oh, the needle minder on there was from Gecko Rouge. And then my final thing is in my ah, project bag from Knit Run, Knit Run Dig, Winnie the Pooh. Um, 
and I am doing Edinburgh Castle by Tara Luna Stitchery. Um, I'm using the Pattern Keeper software on a Kindle Fire 7, uh, using Needle Minders from Top Knot Stitcher, Grime Guard from Crab Shack Stitchery, and a Snippety from Caddy Cross Stitches. Mm -hmm. um, and it's on a 25 count Easy Grid, I believe, using all the called for DMC. So last week when I showed it to you, uh, I was at 22,800 stitches. And here is where I am now. Um, I am at 23,500 stitches out of 265,824. I'm 8.840% complete and I'm still at four pages out of 60 complete. So um, making progress. Um, I'll finish a column this next week and start a new one. More sky, more sky. More sky, more sky. I am, I'm so ready to be out of the sky. I still have a lot to go. I'm like right there. More sky, more sky. I'm hoping I can get back to the place where I'm um, doing 200 stitches a day instead of just 100. Um, but we will see. Um, there's some upcoming life changes that I'm going to tell you about. In Yummies, if you watched the Stitch With Me, you already heard uh, about it. Um, but I will tell you all as well. And so, um, we'll see how much crafting time I have. So, okay, that is everything for Floss Tube. But there is some Cross Stitch Yummies uh, in the next segment. And there will be a, uh, ask, well, Ask the Geeks has some Cross Stitch uh, uh, question. And we'll be doing the 8th anniversary giveaway where there is a cross-stitch um, uh, prize. So, stay tuned. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show, yummies. What are yummies, Nami? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. So I got two of my Fabric of the Months from Fortnite Fabrics. Um, with everything going on in the world, there was some uh, delay getting fabric for them to dye. Mm. So, um, both of these are a 28 count even weave. This is Fairy Ring. It's, just, it's a very, very subtle. Um, mm. And this is Verdigris Agaric. I had to look it up because I couldn't read the writing. It's greener than it's showing on the screen. It's kind, of, it's kind of a sagey green. It's not nice. So, got those in. It smells nice. Yes. Um, do you want to talk about what happened for you this week? On Tuesday? The end? end of the quarter? Oh, um, I finished my summer classes. Do you have grades yet? No. That'd be fine. You would have, like, had to not take the test even for it really to affect it much. Mm -hmm. So, um, so now you are on a break until... When, Two weeks, yay. When do you, what's the day that you move September back? September 12th. We'll be moving back to Seattle to the um, to an apartment this time, uh, an on-campus apartment um, with some other students. So, um, and speaking of school, I am going back to school. Um, I am going to be going back to school to become um, an ASL interpreter, American Sign Language. Um, so, to start with, I have three prerequisite classes that I need to take. Um, so I will be doing those online through our local community college, um, one in the fall quarter, one in the winter, and one in the spring. And then um, I will be, I think it's like around the end of the winter quarter or the beginning of the spring quarter, um, I will be applying to another school here in the state to do the actual full-time two-year program. Um, 
and fingers crossed and all that that I will uh, be accepted into the program. They have they limit the number of students that they take every autumn. Um, so I won't be getting a degree because I already have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. So it would be kind of silly to get an associate's degree. So I will be getting instead um, the the um, certification. Uh, it's a can't remember. It's a certificate. Yeah, but it's called something specific. Um, On the transcript, it's a certificate. Interpreter training, a certificate interpreter training program. So, um, so yeah. So my class starts on the 21st, mm -hmm. so a week after you start. Um, but everything will be online. So um, I'm really excited. This is something that I have thought about on and off over the years. Um, when I was in, I can't remember, fourth grade, fifth grade, um, one of my fellow classmates was deaf. And so we learned some sign um, in communicating with her. And you and I have used finger spelling for ages to spell things across the room or um, do you want to go get coffee <laughs> or whatever. Um, so um, I dropped a stitch. That's what I'm trying to repair here. Okay. Um, so I've been doing some refresher stuff. Um, there is a really amazing um, YouTube channel. The um, professor's name is Bill Vickers, and um, he he is deaf, and he is a professor at a college, I believe, in Sacramento, California. Um, but he has um, he he films some of his classes, and so and then puts them up on YouTube for free. So I've been going through some of those. I've been um, doing some refresher stuff with uh, finger spelling and numbers and, um, and then also just trying to go through some of his, um, some of his classes just to kind of get myself in the mode of studying again. It's been, I finished my master's degree in 2011. So it's been nine years since I've been in school. So just trying to uh, get get to that, get get on track of being in school again. So um, I'm really, really excited about all this. And um, yeah, yeah. So that is what's going on in our lives. Um, we'll talk about our anniversary after a while. Anything else? No. Pumpkin Spice is back. <sighs> pumpkin cream cold brew and pumpkin scones from, uh, and you like the pumpkin spice frappuccinos. I like the pumpkin spice latte, but when it gets a little bit cooler. Um, oh, I love, 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 love pumpkin spice season. Um, if I could live in autumn year around, I would. Um, Autumn is flu season. What is the quote from um, Anne of Green Gables about October? I'm so glad to live in a world where there are Octobers. Yes. That's when you're my birthday is, so that, that makes October. I think that quote is hanging on your wall. I think I got you a print of that. Probably, and then I also think I, I think I have it as a thing on my phone like that I could use as a wallpaper. Let's see... Where, where, where? Do, 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 do. Oh, there it is. Yes. I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. So, yeah. Love, love, love October. Um, and pumpkin spice season. And I'm just ready for it to cool down a little bit more. Um, and I will be in my happy place. So. Um, okay, well, let's talk about hashtag GGK, GGK Crafty Pad. What is it, Dammy? It is a Crafty Photo a Day challenge that we host every month. So you just take a look at the prompt for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it anywhere you like. But we pick our favorites from Instagram. I don't remember what today's prompt is. 
Well, I will look at that in just a moment, but I wanted to say that we released September's list yesterday, mm -hmm. um, and it is about starting into autumn, um, end of summer is on the 22nd, and autumn starts on the 23rd, um, and then some of our just normal stuff um, of colors, numbers, times, projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, Dami, what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. Those were our favorite photos. Great job, everybody. It's never too late to join in. You take a look at the prompt for the day. Today's prompt is, I did it. Um, you interpret it however you wish. We're very cheater friendly on this. You post your photo on Instagram. Make sure in the caption you use hashtag GGK Crafty Pad because that's how we find your photos. If you have a private account on Instagram and you're participating in GGK Crafty Pad, you need to make sure that Dammy, Dammy's Doodles is following you uh, because otherwise we can't see your photos. And then yours might get chosen and be featured here on the podcast and in the show notes and in the Facebook group and on social media when we can because Instagram's being stupid. So, um, all right. Well, I think we are ready to move on to the next segment. to talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. So what are you reading, Dammy? Um, I have not started since my classes have ended. I want to start back on So You Want to Talk About Race by Angie Oma Uluo. I just haven't started doing that yet because my brain is like trying to recover. But I think I would like to read it and a portion at least of Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kennedy before school starts because one of my classes is um, on race in theater. And so. Oh wow. Um, do you know what your textbooks are going to be for that class yet? Yes. You... Oh that's right. One called Theater and Race um, and then An Octoroon by Brandon Jacob Jenkins. Um, M. Butterfly by David Henry Huang, and there's one more play, I think, but I can't remember what it is. Okay. Alrighty. Um, you reading anything else? Uh, the Glass Scientist, which is a webcomic by Sabrina Kutungo. Um, and I know with all your school stuff and such, you are getting in at least 15 minutes a day? Sometimes. Okay. What am I referring to? The July, August, September read-along. Wow. So this is a challenge for you to read 15 minutes a day, every day. I don't care what you're reading, as long as you're reading, audiobooks do count. There is a finish line thread in our Facebook group where you post once and then you edit your comment uh, to show your reading uh, for the season. And then uh, by participating, participating in the seasonal row, you get earn entries into our year-long challenge. And at the beginning of 2021, uh, we will draw for three grand prize winners. So, all the details are in the show notes as well as in the Facebook group. Okay, so I finished reading Fierce, Free, and Full of Fire, The Guide to Being Glorious You by Jen Hatmaker. Um, and it was, I, I enjoyed it. It was good. Um, I am actually almost done. I think I only have like, mm, I think I only have like one chapter in like the uh, epilogue. Uh, left of this book. It's called Unclobber, Rethinking Our Misuse of the Bible on Homosexuality by Colby Martin. So 
the way this book is written, if you read the, I think it's the odd number chapters, um, you get more of the memoir type stuff. Mm -hmm. If you read the even number chapters, or it could be flip flop, but what, anyway, you get what I'm saying. Um, it is, what he does is he is, uh, looking at each of the passages in the Bible that are typically used to clobber uh, LGBTQ people uh, and tell them that they are what they're who they are and what they do is a sin and um, sometimes even worse things are said. Um, I do wish I mean I realize that this book was written, like five years ago, maybe. Um, and things have changed some um, around using the word homosexuality because it tends to have a connotation for a lot of people that is negative because of um, how religion has used the word. So um, that is a little, mm, but um, I do appreciate, I do appreciate the, the look and just, into scripture and the historical and and uh, all of that um, that um, that he writes. So, um, okay. And then fiction wise, um, I'm continuing to reread book five in the Harry Potter series, The Order of the Phoenix, along with the Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast and Swish and Flick and All Potter podcast. Uh, and this week was the second half of the Eye of the Snake chapter. I finished rereading, listening to actually, book one, which is called Red Rising of the Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. And I'm uh, currently listening to book number two, which is called Golden Sun. And I don't have very much of it left. I think I'm at like 85% or something. So I'm, I'm nearing the end of it. It is, I don't know how to totally describe it. It is kind of like Hunger Games meets science fiction, uh, space stuff, ships, but there's, there's, you know, war and fighting and, um, you know, these, these kids were all brought to a, uh, urban sci-fi team dystopia. There we go. Thank you. That is what it is. Um, I had previously, like I said, read uh, book, the first book, and then I had just never followed through on the rest. Um, so I re I listened to, for, I, I had actually read, read uh, the book originally and then listened to it this time um, because Michelle Bindisici, uh had been talking about that she's listening to it. So I picked it back up. I finished a reading, um, Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, um, which I talked about quite a bit, uh, last week, uh, about a, um, a teenager dying and all these things in that uh, the family were keeping secrets as well as, um, so this is, by, sh the author is the same one who wrote Little Fires Everywhere, uh, which I read and actually I'm watching right now. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, I finished reading book number three of the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. It's called Record of a Spaceborn Few. Um, so this series is like all set in the same world, but um, each book is kind of standalone, even though there is some crossover of characters, uh, but it's a science fiction, um, fantasy, uh, space, all of that series. And then last night I finished reading book three of the Lady Astronaut series by Mary Robinette Kowal uh, called The Relentless Moon. Holy cow. It was so good. And it was long. It was like 600 pages long. It was thick. Uh, it just released, I think last month. Um, and, uh, it's about, uh, what hap what would have happened if, when, if a meteor had hit 
the U.S. and destroyed part of it, and the Earth is dying, and they're trying to figure out what to do. And so there's um, a Mars expedition. There is uh, a um, colony on the moon. And this, um, this book in particular is set almost primarily on the moon, and there are uh, people on Earth who are fighting against them being, try, you know, going into space, and uh, it affects some things that are happening on the moon. So, um, highly recommend that series. Very, very good. She also wrote a series that I read previously called, like, I want to say it's like glamorous history or something series um, that, that I really, really enjoyed. It's been a few years since I've read those, but um, yeah, she's a very, very, very good author. So I was right. Uh, I looked it up while we stopped for a minute. Um, glamorous histories is the name of the other series. And it's <laughs> like Jane Austen meets uh, fantasy. Uh, so like, Pride and Prejudice meets Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's a very, very good series as well. Okay, watching. Oh, I didn't know that you had put that on there. I need to put that in the show notes. Um, so my best friend, Hallie, is making me finally watch um, the Twilight movies or else she's going to disown me. Um, she made me watch some of them when I went to her house, but we didn't watch all of them. So... I watched Twilight and Twilight New Moon. You should have told me I would have watched them with you. No, I need to face this alone. This so is now, a private trial. So now you have the other, the two-part one? No, I have Eclipse and then the two-part one. Oh. There are five. I thought there was only four. There okay. are four books, but the last book is in two movies. Uh, for some reason, I thought there was only three books. Now there's a fifth book called Midnight Sun, and Hallie got it the first day it came out. Well, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. It's Twilight from Edward's point of view. Yes. <laughs> fun time. She knows I'm making fun of it as I watch it. All right, um, I finished watching uh, the TV series Zoo. Um, they apparently didn't know they were being canceled because it ended on a cliffhanger. <laughs> it's what would happen yeah. if uh, animals kind of went crazy and in trying to stop them, they end up making the entire human race uh, unable to have children um, and all of that, so... Um, I started watching, and I think I'm about halfway through Little Fires Everywhere, which is a mini series uh, on Hulu. Um, well, on Amazon as well. Uh, I found it there when I was doing linking a while ago. Um, and it's, it seems very heavy. It, it is. Um, so Reese Witherspoon and Carrie Washington um, are are both in it uh, and I believe both helped produce it um, but it's set in Shaker Heights in the like end of the 90s um, and it's about about a uh, fairly well-off family um, and they end up renting a rental property to a single mom who's an artist and her teenage daughter and how their lives become intertwined and there is um, Gosh, there's so many trigger warnings uh, for uh, alcohol, drugs, um, child abandonment, adoption, infertility, miscarriage. Uh, d there's a lot. It's a, it is, it's very, very heavy. So, um, I'm trying to figure out your numbers. Yes. So, um, yeah, it's heavy. It, it's heavy. I'm glad I read the book first. Um, but yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to work on the mm -hmm. next thing? Oh, um, we finished rewatching season four and now we're on to season five of Warehouse 13. Yes, the season that only has six episodes. <laughs> I had forgotten. I thought it was a full length, epi a full -length season. And like we're, I'm looking and I'm like, wait, what? Why is there only six episodes? I think we only have three left maybe. 
but we will definitely finish it before you go back to school. So, um, also rewatching season four of Psych. You want to talk about the next thing? Oh, um, so Jonathan Moore posted his last episode of Cabin Fever, which was a little YouTube mini series he was doing based on his BBC4 radio comedy, Cabin Pressure, which is also what I'm listening to every day. I've got them on my mind. Yes. Um, Did, were you emotional? We, we, we watched it together. We were both emotional. Yes. Oh. I was sad for it to end. It was so good. Um, okay, and then I'm watching season seven of The Hundred. Uh, this last episode was a little different, which made me feel happier because it had felt like the same thing over and over and over again. Um, but now I think it's on a hiatus because they've got to finish the rest of the episodes to end the series. Um, and then we're also watching season four of Winona Earp, uh, listening to my favorite murder podcast. David Tennant does a podcast with, I always say his name wrong, George... From Star Trek. Takei? Takei. I always want to say Takai, but it's, it's, it's not right. It's Takei. Um, it was such a good episode, and I actually I actually need to pick it up from the library. I have an appointment on Monday to pick up library uh, books. But I put a request, a hold request, on um, this new book that he's recently released called... They Called Us Enemy, and it's um, a graphic novel about um, uh, his time as a child prisoner of the Japanese-American internment camps. Um, so I am really looking forward to reading it. I, I had found it on available um, through Libby on my a phone through the library, but I felt like it would be hard to read because it is a graphic memoir. I felt like it would be easier to read um, if I actually had a copy of it. So they had, they have, or the library has it. So I will pick that up on Monday and uh, read that. I'm I'm looking forward to that. But it was a very good episode. I'm really really enjoying David Tennant's um, podcast episodes. He has very very insightful. Um, guests on so um i highly recommend it um so what else am i listening to oh the evolving faith podcast random spotify playlist cabin pressure spotify yep all right well i think that is everything for this segment so let's move on to the next one and now we're going to talk about our june july august summertime and the living is easy ow you have Four more days. Three more days from the day this goes live. You have a small amount of days um, to enter your projects on the Facebook FO thread. This along started on the 1st of June and runs through the 31st of August. And it's for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, spin, stitch, or sew that you can convince us is related to summer. No whips are allowed. No whips allowed. Your project cannot have been begun before June 1st mm. and each project um, it's okay the train is gone choo choo um, I think we need coffee I think we can have cold brew from the fridge pumpkin spice season y'all each project that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin must be at least 20 yards. If it's not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post together. Not a single post, a single comment together with other projects that together total. At least 20 yards. Um, you can feel free to poly dip in other longs as long as it fits in with those rules. That's totally fine. We've got lots of our wonderful prizes on our screen right now. Um, we will, and, we'll award them next week. Yeah. You must be a member of our podcast group on Facebook in order to participate. Um, the hashtag, if you want to tag your projects, is GGKCS Summertime 20. Um, the FO thread will be locked for comments on the morning of the 1st of September. Winners will be drawn for the next podcast after that. And any winners will have 30 days to claim their prize or they forfeit it. Yes. There's also a chatter thread that's in the Facebook group. Now I'm going to give shout outs to people who finished projects this week. They are Alex. Emily R, Emily V S, Hillary, Jane, Rita, 
Rivi, Rivi. I don't know if it's Rivi or Rivi. And then Sarah and Silver. Great job, everybody. So get those projects finished. Um, is Tuesday, is it Tuesday that is the first? Yeah. Yeah. So get your projects finished and posted by Monday night because I will um, close the thread for comments um, Tuesday morning when I get up and get on my computer. So, um, yeah, and you might be a winner. But since this uh, owl is ending, that means we have a brand new one starting on Tuesday. And now we're going to talk about our September, October, November artistic autumnal owl. Autumnal. So this runs through the 1st of September through the 30th of November, and it's for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, spin, stitch, or sew that you can convince us is related to autumn. If somebody's new here, would you tell them how they can do that? I was about to do that. Okay, good. Um, by your project's color, colorway name, purpose, pattern, pattern name, design element, or if you can't think of anything, you made it in the autumn. Yes. There are a couple main rules. The first is that no whips are allowed. Your project must have been begun no earlier than the 1st of September, then finished no later than 30th of November. And then each project that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin must be at least 20 yards. If it's not at least 20 yards, you need to group it into a single comment and also a single photo um, in the Facebook FO thread. For stitching and sewing projects, we leave it up to your best judgment if it is large enough. Yes. You can feel free to poly dip in other longs as long as it fits in with other rules. That's totally fine. Prizes. We're going to talk about our prizes. And if you are interested in donating a prize for this owl or a future one, you can email us at ggkcspodcast at gmail.com. Yes. So let's talk about the prizes. Do you want to start uh, or do you want me to? Our first one is a stitch marker sets that were made and donated by Julia of Pandia's Jewels. There's one set of Labyrinth and one set of Frankenstein. So two, two winners will each win a random set. We have an orange camper project bag made by Art by Anna, donated by Rhonda. Uh, we have Just Cross Stitch, volume 37, number 5, from October 2019. Lots of spooky patterns in there. Yeah, yep, lots of autumn stuff. We have a, a copy of Hildy's, the Hildy's Brew Cross Stitch Pattern uh, by Michelle um, of Bindi Stitchy Designs. Michelle donated that. And then we've got a zipper pouch and mini skeins uh, that were donated by Hillary, who's textile lady on Instagram. Yes, those are the ones that we showed last week. So uh, thank you so much to all of our uh, prize donors. And um, yeah, yeah. Okay, what else? So you've got to be a member of the GGKCS group on Facebook in order to participate. There's a hashtag if you want to tag a post. It's GGKCS Autumn 20. Um, our FO thread will be locked for comments on the morning of the 1st of se December, and winners will be drawn for the next podcast after that. And any winners will have 30 days to claim their prize or they forfeit it. And there's a chatter thread, like usual, for all our else. Yes, I haven't created those threads yet um, because... I don't know if I can like lock them for comments and then open them or not. Um, because like I know when we used to do it on Ravelry, I could create the the thread and then lock it and then unlock it on the morning of. So I don't know if I can do that or not. If not, I will just post those on Tuesday as soon as I can. So, um, all right. Well, I think that is everything for this owl. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeks, the part of our show where you ask us things and we try to answer them. That's right. So what's this week's question? This week's question is from Janie, who asks, uh, who are your knitting and floss tube inspirations? Which designers would you most like to sit down and have coffee with or a class with? Do you have any that you can think of? I don't know. Because you, you don't really watch podcasts or floss mm -hmm. tubes. So. I like is older. Yeah. Which we, we got to meet her because she's uh, she lives in Edinburgh. I'm really lucky and blessed to be friends um, or at least have acquaintance relationships with um, several of the of of the people that are in my inspirations or that I enjoy their their podcasts or floss tubes. Um, Tin Can Knits um, was friends with Emily. Uh, because she also lived in Edinburgh and 
was lucky enough to meet um, Alexis last year when uh, Alexa. Alexa, sorry, Alexa, when um, I went to Vancouver for Knit City. I couldn't tell you. I believe that's what it was called. Um, one of these days, it is going to happen that I get to finally meet Michelle Bindi Stitchy in person. Life keeps messing things up. Um, I would love to be able to take a class from Hohi Locatelli. Um, I, I, I just, I love her designs. Um, and I think it would be really cool to be able to sit down and learn from her. Um, there's floss tubes that I watch. S several of them, I, I, I know them already in, uh, whether they're in, uh, my crustage group or they're, uh, I've met them through, uh, First Thursdays at Acorns and Threads. Um, I'd love to meet in person my friend Liz that Needle Makes. Um, I'd love to meet, meet Christine, Stitch All the Things. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really wonderful to have a community where um, even if you've never met in person, you can still um, have a relationship around um, your shared um, love of knitting or cross stitch or geeky things or reading or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, yeah, there's lots of lo lovely, lovely people in the knitting and cross stitch world and it would take more hours than are in a day, week, month, year to watch all of them. Um, because there's just so many. So, um, but yeah, designers knit wise that, that inspire me, uh, Tin Ken Knits, uh, Hoya Locatelli, those are probably my top two favorite. Um, and then cross stitch wise, love Michelle, Bindi Stitchy stuff. Um, and there's lots of other cross stitch designers that I'm learning about as I'm back new. I feel still feel fairly new to the cross stitch world. Uh, even though I cross stitched before it had been so many years that there's so many new designers and so many new things that I'm still continuing to learn about. So yeah. Did I answer the question? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, thank you so much to Janie for the question. If somebody has a question for us, what should they do, Dammy? You can post it in our Ask the Greek, Ask the Geeks thread in our Facebook group or in the YouTube comments. Yes. All right. Um, well, we have some giveaways to tell you all about, so let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for giveaways. Yes, because it's our eighth anniversary. We took a photo before we started of us with our cake that we will eat tonight. Um, the whole thing. No, probably not the whole thing. No. Um, and Sunday is actually our official eighth anniversary. Um, we didn't plan it this way, but Russ is your daddy is um, making steak and baked potatoes for our me our main meal on Sunday. Um, so we get celebrated with a special meal, I guess. So, um, but yeah, eight years ago, we were living in Texas when we started this and, uh, we've carried it through over into Edinburgh, Scotland and, uh, now here in Washington state and, uh, some time in California as well. Um, so it's been a, it's been a journey and, um, we're just so grateful for each of you that have been with us, no matter how long it's been, if you've been with us since day one, or if this is your very first episode, um, we're just really grateful for, um, the friendships and the community that we've made, the support we've had, um, and just that you are, you are a part of our community and we're just grateful for each of you. We love you guys. So, okay. So we have uh, four giveaways that we're going to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to create four different threads in the Facebook group. So you have to be a member of the Facebook group to participate. Mm -hmm. If you've not joined our Facebook group yet, tell them how and the answers to the questions. Facebook.com slash groups slash GGKCS. 
You can join this group. It's going to pop up some questions. The answer to the first question, name of our cat, is Pink. The answer to the second question, who is the mama? It's Cece. Then you need to read the group rules, scroll to the bottom of the group rules, hit I agree to the group rules, and then submit the questions. Yes. Um, okay, and then I'm going to create four threads, um, and you there will be one for each prize is what we're doing so that if you like for example don't cross stitch you might no then you probably don't want to enter to win that prize um you're welcome to enter one two three or four all four of them um we're just going to ask one question and you can either answer the same answer on all four uh threads or if you want to do a different answer on each one that's fine as well the question is what has been either your favorite episode, your favorite episode title, or your favorite memory from um, the eight years that we've been doing the show. So, um, okay, so the first thing that we're going to be giving away is this gorgeous skein of yarn. This is Knitology by Knit Crate. It is the Knitology Sheen Base. It's a 75% merino wool, 15% silk, 10% cashmere. Fingering weight, 400 yards, 366 meters, 100 grams. The color weight is Titmouse. And it's this beautiful brown and lavender and navy and yellow um, yarn. The second skein we're going to be giving away is Uru Yarn by Knit Crate. It is their cotton basic um, base, which is 100% organic Pima cotton. It's a DK weight, 266 yards, 242 meters, 100 grams. Uh, the color weight is pavement, so it's this beautiful grays. And I feel like you can pair gray with anything, so I feel mm -hmm. like it's a really good uh, neutral. I think the name of this is Fit to be Tied, because... Oh, maybe. It's tied up in the yo, -yo. <laughs> So this was actually um, donated by Lori... And this is a Geary Patterson Counted Cross Stitch Kit. I think Dammy's right that it's called Fit to be Tied. So we've got the, the cat tied up in the yo-yo and there's a mouse as well. There, this has 14 count Ada fabric, the floss needle, uh, needle and um, the chart and everything to stitch it. There you can see all the beautiful floss. It's very earth tones. So, and then the fourth thing is one lucky person is going to get all, I don't even know how many there are, 60, I believe, 60-ish um, knitting patterns, single knitting patterns that we have designed over the last eight years. Um, there is not an easy way that I have found for me to be able to send them to you through Etsy or through Payhip, which is where we're selling our patterns now. So I will be emailing you the PDFs. It will actually be multiple emails because you can only attach so many. Oh, that's a good idea. I can, but I still have to have their email address. Yeah, um, I can show them via Google Drive, but that means they'll get a one for every, they'll get an email for every single one. You tell us your preference. Do you want me to email them to you in a number of emails or? Um, do you want me to give you the link on Google Drive for all of them? The winner can tell me that. Uh, you don't have to decide now. So, uh, those are our four prizes. The, the two different skeins of yarn, the cross stitch kit, and all of our patterns. All of our single patterns, uh, that are paid for. The free ones, you know, you can obviously get by going to our website. So, um, yeah. So, we just wanted to do something special to thank y'all. And, um, you know, you've been with us for 410 episodes, plus all the Stitch With Me episodes are not included in that number. So close to 430 episodes, I think. So um, thanks for being with us. And um, we celebrate you as you celebrate with us. So, um, all right. I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. We made it to the end of the show. Um, thanks for sticking with us. I know there's a, there was a lot of stuff this week. So, um, with Dammy going back to school, there are going to be some changes um, happen with the podcast. Um, so we will share 
more about that in the next uh, week or two before you go back to school. Mm -hmm. Um, But there will be some changes. Uh, Don't worry. Podcast is still happening. There will just be some changes. So, um, yeah. You have to make adjustments as life happens. So, um, do we have any other announcements? No. Okay. Well, we want to say a big thank you. We love you guys. To everybody who supports the podcast, however it is you do, just by watching us, that is supporting. So um, we're very grateful for each one of you. But an especially big thank you to those of you who support us financially. Um, We use the money that is donated to buy prizes, to ship prizes, to pay for technology behind the scenes, such like that. So uh, thank you to each of you who um, support us financially. If you would like to do that, there are four different ways you could do that. First is Patreon, which is a site where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives, um, and you earn rewards based on the level you donate at. If uh, you want to find out more about go. that, you can go to patreon.com slash ggkcs, or there is a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website if you would like to make a one-time donation. Sorry, I like totally lost my train of thought. Um, we are also bookshop.org affiliates. Every week we create a list on Bookshop of all the books that we talk about in that week's episode. Bookshop is an online bookstore with a mission to financially support local independent bookstores. If you purchase a book from our list, we earn a commission and local independent bookstores also earn money from your purchase. Uh, You can find our shop in the show notes or at bookshop.org, bookshop.org slash shop slash ggkcs. And then we are also amazon.com.co.uk and .ca affiliates. If you're going to shop on Amazon, if you go to our site first, click on the appropriate link in the sidebar or at the bottom of the show notes, do your shopping as normal. We earn a little money back based on what you purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it's a great way to support the podcast by doing something you would be doing anyway. Um, Dammy, why don't you tell them where they can find us online? You can find us at ggkcs.com. There, there are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. That's right. Well, with that, we're going to tell you goodbye. We hope you have a lovely weekend. Um, I I uh, mentioned I don't know if I mentioned it last week in the this in the regular episode, but I think I talked about it in the Stitch with me this week that I'm going to start recording those on Sundays, and they will still go live on Mondays. But um, I'm just needing to adjust some things with going back to school. So. Um, Yeah, so we'll see you again on Monday uh, and then again next week for the regular episode. Um, There's lots going on in our world right now. Um, We encourage you to stay safe, um, stay healthy, make smart decisions, uh, support people that are struggling, and um, stand up for those who, who who need help. So... Uh, happy crafting. Happy anniversary, everyone. And we will see you again next time. Bye. Bye. Kinky, what's going on? Is Dammy spraying things? Are you in trouble? No? What is it? What is it? What did Dammy spray? I smell that thing in your hand, Dammy. And I really would like it, please. I bought a a spray bottle of catnip um, to refresh and mainly her blankie there that she is now licking because she's a weirdo cat. Uh, but yeah, we sprayed it on uh, this toy over here as well as on the scratching post right there. She does love her catnip. <laughs>